Derby House practiced in a couple days in the week? Uh, it's been good. They've uh, had two good days. Uh, intro to Ole Miss yesterday and then some regular down stuff uh, today and we'll do some more third down red area tomorrow. They've uh, been locked in and it's, it's a tough prep because they do a lot of different things offensively and uh, create a lot of problems on defense. I mean, they are uh, um, create TFLs and, 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 uh, and their havoc. I mean, they, 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 they create a lot of havoc. So uh, trying to stay kind of ahead of the sticks and ahead of the chains, they do a good job. So it's been a good prep, though. Yeah, Coach, you talked about their run game. Their quarterbacks are extremely competitive runners, particularly out, outside the pocket. How do you go about coaching your team up to hit him this week outside the pocket without, you know, going out there? They do a good job of protecting the quarterback with the rules and things like that. Do you go about this guy different with the way that he runs? No, once he's a, once he's a runner, he's, he's no more protected than a running back. I mean, we're going to tackle him like we tackle backs. He's, he's physical. I mean, their backs are physical. They're, they're, they're all hard to tackle in terms of size and stature. He's... You know, you get over 210, 215 pounds, and they're running, you know, four fours, four fives. It's physical, and uh, he lowers his shoulder and competes um, to play. So, um, I have a lot of respect for the way he runs. But in terms of us tackling him, it's going to be, you know, like we do a, a back. Coach, what all has Brock Bowden been able to do these two days, and how has he looked? Um, he's working hard. Uh, he's doing all he can in terms of trying to get himself in, in, in shape and get better. I mean, he's back running now on, on dry land. And uh, I mean, we're, we're, we're hoping that he keeps getting better. I mean, that's that's kind of the MO on this injury is, you know, every kid we've had so far has had it. Week one, they do this. Week two, they do this. Week three, they do that. Week four, I mean, he's, he's right on schedule for the things he's been doing. Just a quick follow up, if you don't mind, I, I have no idea. As far as a, the tightrope, you know, surgery goes, how much is the pain tolerance play into how when a player is cleared to be able to get back on the field? Yeah, I've never had it either, Anthony, so I can't answer that. You know, I don't, I don't know. I, he, some guys say it hurts worse than others. I mean, Lucky shared his experiences with Brock, and uh, Jobs had two of them. Cash had one. Mel um, Mims has obviously had one. So, uh, from what I hear, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's more painful in the beginning. and. It's like a roller coaster ride. It has its ups and downs and moments, and you know you, you continue to push through it, and you get better as you go. Yeah, we'll get to talk to Marcus in a little bit. Just what can you say about the journey he's been on here from you know that first year he suffers that, that ankle injury against Florida, and now he's you know a leader on the team and one of the, the top receivers on this offense. Yeah, when we recruited Marcus, we, we knew we were getting that kind of kid. Um, he's, uh, he went to you know, a great school down in South Florida, St. Thomas, and he's a great kid. He comes from a great family. Uh, he, he's very passionate about football. Um, you know, I, I, I don't know when you, when you rank leaders at Georgia, there's, 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 there's been some great ones since we've been here in terms of the, the command and respect they've earned by what they've been through and what they've done. And, and he would be right there at the, the top of those guys in terms of when he speaks, people listen. Um, the way he competes, you know, and his toughness and his effort. Uh, he upholds our culture. Um, I mean, he begs to be on special teams. I mean, he just embodies what you want a Georgia football player to be, and I have a lot of respect for him as a competitor. Coach, getting back Ole Miss's defense again, how much is what they're doing for us schematics, schematics go? Similar what people what he's doing, similar to what he did at Alabama. Well, he doesn't have the exact same players he had at Alabama, so I think he's done a good job, uh, you know, making his scheme his scheme. And there's similarities, but you don't just do the scheme. No defensive coordinator just goes, "Oh well, I'm gonna cookie cutter this. This is what I do. This is what I believe in." You do what fits your system. Um, and he's taken the, the players he has there, and uh, he's made them, you know, better on defense. They're, they, they, they they fly around. They attack the ball. Um, they do a lot of really good things, but they're, I mean, they're just not the, not the exact same uh, players that they have Alabama in terms of just sheer size and numbers, but they are very talented in what they do. Kirby, y'all have probably had several kind of cornerstone pieces during this run. Y'all have been on. Um, Cedric seems to be one of them. I'm curious what he's brought to this program. Character, um, leadership, charisma, heart. 
Uh, he's not afraid to speak up. But look, all the great leaders we have this year, they learned two years ago from a great leadership class. That leadership class learned from a really good, I mean, you learn from those before you. And those that laid the foundation all the way back to Nick and Sony have trickled down to everybody else. So when you have good core people, you're not gonna win every game. I mean, it's just not gonna happen. You're not gonna do that. But if you put good people in your program and you demand excellence and you hold them to a standard and you uh, pay attention to every little detail, eventually you get pretty good leadership out of people. And that's, we've been bearing the fruits of a lot of work that we put into these players, uh, really from COVID on. Yeah, obviously even before this week, C.J. Allen and uh, Braden Wilson had shown that they are going to be able to contribute and help you guys. Was there anything maybe early on in their time here or when you were even recruiting them that sort of let you know that these are going to be guys that are going to be able to help us day, or their first year here on campus? Yeah, I don't know that I can sit here and say anything set them apart to, to make them able to. You don't know if a guy's going to be able to play as a freshman until they get here and see how they learn and process and um, – and I, you know, they were both bright kids and they were both really talented kids. So physically they had the gifts to be able to play. But I mean, within our defense, there's a mental uh, rep count that you got to get. And luckily they had all spring um, and they got it down in the spring Then they had all summer and they've had all fall camp. And, and Raylan would, would be probably at, at least where CJ is or ahead if he had not had the, the injury in camp. And, that set him back, but he's caught up really quick, and uh, they're both really good athletes. Yeah, Coach, you mentioned sharing different stats, like the explosive stat with Wayne and his staff. I'm curious if there's any other things that you guys have kind of shared back and forth over the years. And I know you've talked about the relationship, but is there any other uniqueness other than, you know, there's some mingling between the staffs in the offseason? No, I mean, it's, uh, I have a lot of respect for Lane. I've told you that he and I shared seats next to each other uh, at Alabama for, I don't know, two years, I guess it was, maybe three. I don't, I don't ever know how long we were there together because it all runs together. But a lot of respect for him as a coach. Um, he was a head coach at a really young age. He, he, he taught me a lot of things about what he believes and, 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 and you know, being a head coach and, uh, you know, doing it your way. And he certainly had a unique experience in terms of the places he's been able to work as a head coach. And uh, he draws on that. And, uh, you know, I mean, there's, there's times we share, you know, ideas or, uh, you know, GPS numbers or, or whatever, but um, there's nothing outside of just a really good friendship and respect. Coach Tanner asked you later how Branson Robinson is doing his rehab. Is, it a, is he going to be able to go, to go come spring practice? You know, I don't know the answer to that. Uh, I, I, the closest thing we had was uh, Ryan Davis went through this um, the one year. And uh, it's, 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 it's a long, arduous process. And uh, I can't answer that. I, don't, I think he'll probably be cleared, but I don't know if he'll uh, uh, be able to go through like live tackling and everything. Yeah, obviously, confidence remains high in Carson back. What's maybe one area where going into this final stretch of the regular season here, you want to see him continue to improve and get better? Uh, his leadership uh, continue to improve and, 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 and exert his confidence and uh, put his touch on his personality with, with those guys is something. I mean, he's, he's into all the ball stuff. I mean, he, he could be cleaner on some things in the pocket. Uh, he can be cleaner on some protection things, but I mean, they're, they're, he's going to make mistakes because we put him in a position to make you know, three to four decisions every play. So he's not going to be perfect, but I can accept that. I just I want him to continue to grow as a leader and uh, commanding uh, of the offense. Kirby, earlier this year you, you joked around when you, when you broke that record for most wins in the first 100 games by an SEC coach and said you had an easy schedule. but. Or easier, I think was how you said it that night, kiddingly. But is nothing easy about this league, I can promise you that. For sure. Uh, do you think there's more parity now than there was even seven, eight years ago? And where I'm going with that is I think you and Lane were together for part of the Alabama 2016 win streak as well. Is it, it's NIL and transfer rules made it a little bit more even across the board? I think so. I don't, I don't know. I don't think we'll know the totality of uh, NIL portal until we look back from five to ten year window. You can't really um, have enough substance to, to judge 
um, that, but there, there seems to be more parity. I don't know. There's, there's, you know, teams don't have as uh, deep of deep of rosters as the, uh, we used to. Yeah, coach. Obviously, every home game is important for fans to be loud. But with this offense having as much window dressing and pre snap movement as it does, is this a unique challenge to your fan base to be even louder? And can they have an even bigger impact on this football game? Yeah, they they can have a huge impact, and we need them to. Um, I'm counting on them um, to have a huge impact. I mean, look, Ole Miss has played in some tough stadiums, not only this year but last year. They they they've gone across the. SEC West and seen all the, the tough places to play and uh, you know the, it's not going to be foreign to them to play in a tough environment but we certainly need to create it um, for them and uh, we need to you know we need to we need to create problems for them on defense and, and make it hard uh, for them to play against us along with the, the, the crowd the, the crowd needs to have an impact and uh, and pull in the same direction uh, for our players Come two more anybody? I wanted to ask about Javon Boulder. I think he might have said a little bit earlier this year he might have been a little bit banged up. It seems like of late he's come back on. What what is can you just talk about the importance he has even beyond the position and, and how he transcends into that defense? Yeah, he's a great leader. Uh, he's heart and soul. He and Kamari have such passion for the game. They compete against each other every day in practice and uh, they're both physically tough. Um, they love football. Uh, they're they're at the edge of their seat every meeting taking notes. They love nuggets. Um, he's just a, a, a great kid and great leader that, that's a, that loves football. Kirby, how has the Ernest Green done, uh, you know, closing into, I guess, three games left in the regular season? He's been out there obviously the whole time. Uh, what's his been, what's his been uh, progression, I guess? He's done a really good job. I mean, he's come into a league it's hard to play left tackle in. He's played really well. I mean, he's, he's had his snafus. He's had some mistakes. He's had uh, some jumpy moments. but. I think the fact that he's played through all that and he's playing with more and more confidence, um, we've really challenged him to get in shape to be able to play four quarters um, at full speed and give max effort. And uh, I think he's taking that on and really working hard at it. He's very uh, conscientious about working this stuff. Thank you.